This is the Better Late Than Never weekly news of AI, and we have a lot to cover, so let's get going. So this week, Google released Nano Banana, and you can see here, try our newest and best model, Nano Banana, which took the internet by storm. It is by far their best model, not just their best model, but according to Ella Marina, text to image, it is the best model available. It is really good because it can use facial features and recreate the same person over and over in different scenarios. So here I have AI Dana with a prompt that says, hey, make this lady sitting inside of a car and it is able to take her facial expressions and put her inside of a car. And you can see it merged her over perfectly. We can also make modifications to an image. So say we want to change what she's wearing. We can say, hey, make the lady wearing a red dress. So it's going to take the same exact image now, but instead of wearing the blue, which was kind of up here, now it's going to generate an image of her wearing a red dress. So Nano Banana is absolutely incredible for image editing with consistent characters. So there she is with the red dress and you can see the before and the after. It is absolutely incredible, hence why it is at the top of the leaderboard. NVIDIA also released their Jetson AGX developer kit and it is absolutely incredible. We're talking 96 fifth generation sensor cores, 128 gigs of memory, and 2070 FP4 teraflops of AI compute. It is absolutely madness. And it sells for three and a half thousand dollars, which is incredible. OpenAI had a couple of updates this week, so they introduced GPT real-time and real-time API updates for production voice agents. They actually did a whole live stream for this, and I'm not exactly sure why, but the real-time API has general availability now. So now you can make your own production-ready voice agents in your own applications. The API also supports remote MCP servers, which is pretty cool, image inputs, and phone calling, which is pretty awesome. And their speech-to-speech -speech model also got an update. AI at this point isn't optional, it's leverage. The ones who learn AI will outrun those who don't. So if you wanna stay ahead, you have to start learning AI today. So let me introduce you to this incredible, powerful two-day AI mastermind happening this weekend on Saturday and Sunday. Two days with expert mentors, 16 hours of learning and over 10 AI tools. You'll go from an AI rookie to an AI pro and stay relevant for the next decade. This training normally costs $895, but I've partnered with Outskill, the world's biggest AI educational platform, to give away 1,000 free seats to my loyal viewers for the next 72 hours. Whether you're in HR, marketing, sales, or even running your own business or freelancing, folks from all backgrounds have showed up and absolutely loved it. So make sure your calendars are cleared for the weekend. The coming Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on both days. Thanks once again to Outskill for sponsoring this video. OpenAI also has some updates for CodeX, which includes an IDE extension, so it actually just works with VS Code now or any compatible fork. So if you're using any of the other IDEs, like Cursor, which is just a fork of VS Code, you can just install CodeX now and use it right on top, which is pretty cool. So they have a chat mode where you can like talk to it first and make a plan. And then there's also agent, which you provide it full access and then it can just go f crazy and start programming for you. There's some other features like code reviews and some other things. I hope to have some time this week to dive in and have some fun with this. Meanwhile, Microsoft is starting to build some of their own in-house models. We have the MAI Voice 1 and MAI 1-Preview. The voice model can actually generate a minute of speech in just one second, which is absolutely wild. And the MAI 1-Preview just specializes in just everyday text. So right now on Ella Marina, if we go to overall, we can hopefully find it somewhere here. And here it is. It is currently ranked 15th with a score of 1,399, just below Gemini 2.5 Flash. So for a model that they're developing in-house, it's not terrible. It's not fantastic. It's not like top of the leaderboard, but it's doing pretty good. Anthropic is starting to test agentic browsing. So it is actually just a Chrome extension that you install. And right now it is limited to a thousand people that have the max plan, the Claude max plan. I actually got an invite, I signed up, but I wasn't selected. Hopefully in the next batch, I'll get it. But basically they go on to say, hey, Claude works with your calendar documents and other pieces. The next logical step is to make Claude work directly in your browser. 
So they have this like little demonstration video where you can like click the Claude icon and then you can say, hey, can you do this or do that for me? And Claude will just run in your Chrome browser based off whatever you want. So they're like, hey, can you find a three bedroom house or some food or noodles and add them to my cart? And it's able to go forward and do all this stuff for you. So it looks pretty cool. I hope to have access to this in the near future. I love how they acknowledge internal testing can't replicate the full complexity of how people browse in the real world. So they're basically saying, hey, we're doing all these internal tests, but we're not going to be able to say, hey, this is exactly how people are going to use it because everyone is different. There's so many use cases. The edge cases are real. So that'd be a fun one. XAI also had an update this week and they released a whole new model. It is called Grok Code Fast 1. So I guess they have plans to release increased versions of this over time. So it's just like a speedy, economical version of Grok that excels at just coding. So if you're on this page, they have like some nice buttons here. So you can try it like directly with cursor or GitHub Copilot or Klein. So you can just like click these and it'll install on your device. And it is supposed to be really fast. They have like this little example of like a battle simulator and let's see the next one ui design and you can see here create three unique designs tailored to your style of preference and it can do that or this whole battle simulator that they show and their prices are extremely reasonable so we're talking 20 cents per million input tokens or a dollar 50 per million output tokens which is absolutely wild I like how they also have like this model performance here so you can see like the tokens per second how fast it is and then the output price. The only problem with this is speed versus how much you're paying is fantastic, but the quality of the code is questionable. So I've played around with it a little bit. I have some friends that played around with it and we've all come to the general same conclusion. It's not very good at coding and that's what it's supposed to be good at. So not the greatest first model, but it will get better. So that's a positive. They also have like a whole prompt engineering guide, so you can play around with that as well. So you can just like open it up and say, hey, okay, let's learn how to prompt this thing. It's also important to know that this is Grok code fast. So I hope there's like a more advanced version that works better. Just my hope. Alibaba also had a release of a new model called WAN 2.2 S2V. So this is a 14 billion parameter model, and this is a speech to video model. Behind. The air turns cold, but I feel the chill. That's really good. Let's see this one here. A hundred miles, a hundred miles, rolling tracks and endless trials. So they basically have these still images here, and the prompt is like, in this video, a man is walking alongside the railway track, singing to express his emotion as he goes, and the train slowly passes him so you can hear him singing he's expressing his motion and the train is the whistle sing. slowly going by him i don't see the train moving though the heart complies, rolling miles. so the audio is good the singing's good i think the first example is actually a little bit better but this is a fully open source model the last piece of news I want to talk about is humanoids, and I know humanoids are really cool, and it's like, hey, what can they do? Can they do my laundry? Can they fold the clothes? Can they put in dishes? Can they clean the house? Well, there is a university that's doing something productive with humanoids. Let me show you. We have humanoid versus humanoid playing ping pong, and you can see they're playing pretty well back and forth. I find this oddly amusing. They're pretty good, and... I know what you're thinking, hey, they can be pre-programmed to hit exactly to each other, but you can see here the humanoid is actually playing against the human back and forth, and there's actually like a shot counter, and they're able to go back like a hundred plus times, which is wild. So there you have it, humanoids doing productive things. As always, I'll have a link in the description below for all of these different things for the week. If you guys enjoyed this week's news coverage of AI. Don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Don't forget to like the video. It tells the algorithm you enjoy this type of content and you want to see more of it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with another AI video.